The other rogues out there, they're so wasteful. They find a target, they kill a target, and they move on. But you've learned the art and mastered the ability to take advantage of your victims long after they've shuffled off the mortal coil. To be able to take a piece of their soul and use it for your own ends. Today we're talking about the Phantom Rogue. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Geek Pantheon. I am Eric and today we're talking about the Phantom Rogue subclass from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. This was a video requested by Ryan Connor down in the comments below, so thank you Ryan. And if you have a subclass from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything or any other book out there that you'd like me to do a deep dive on, let me know down in the comments below and I'll add it to the list. So an overview of the Phantom Rogue before we get into the class features. This one, I think, does a good job through the different class features of really trying to replicate to a certain degree that old school feeling of the rogue being truly the jack of all trades, being able to do a little bit of everything uh, through some of their abilities, but with really cool flavoring attached to it. Uh, this subclass also gives a decent bump in damage in a really interesting way. And I like it overall. I think that it has a good through line. It tells a good story from the flavor. I think there's a lot of different ways that you can take the flavor for this subclass, which I really like. But overall, I think it works really well. I think it makes sense. I think there's a lot of really good pop culture characters that you can draw on to have this rogue that has this ability over death almost and the ability to, to communicate with their victims and with the dead is super interesting, this this character type that typically deals out a lot of death, being the one that can communicate with the souls that have, have um, gone on to whatever plane of afterlife your setting has. So I really like it, and the soul trinket mechanic is super fun. I like it. I'm going to get into later on in the video, uh, in the kind of how to play slash DM this subclass, why I think it's really cool, but it's it's one of my favorite mechanics to come out of a subclass, in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. If, if you're just looking at singular mechanics that these subclasses got, this one certainly ranks pretty high. Okay, so let's get into the class features. So starting off at third level, you have the Whispers of the Dead subclass. So this one, after you finish a short or long rest, you can gain proficiency in a tool or skill that you don't currently have proficiency in, and you get to keep it until you use this feature again to gain a new skill or tool proficiency. And this is one of the things that I was talking about of trying to capture that old school rogue, like where you have 20 different skills that you have a bunch of ranks in and stuff like that. Uh, I think this this is a cool way of, of providing that kind of feel while not making it super imbalanced because obviously you only get to pick one and you only get to keep it as long as you don't use this to gain another one. So it's very situational, but it is tied to a short rest, which is far less of a commitment than a long rest. And so I really do like that, this idea that your party is in a terrain or an environment that maybe you really need survival right now, and nobody has a strong survival score. And so after taking a short rest, you can commune with a spirit of the dead who is really good at survival, and you gain that proficiency until the next short or long rest. So I it, that you use this ability. You can take a long rest and not use it and still get to keep that proficiency. But I really do like it. I think it gives this subclass a lot of flexibility and really makes it a rogue type that can slot into a lot of different roles and be very adaptable based on what the adventure is throwing at you. The other third level class feature that you get is Whales from the Grave. So this one, when you deal your sneak attack damage, so it has to be an attack where you got to deal your sneak attack damage, another creature you can see within 30 feet of the original target takes damage equal to half your uh, sneak attack dice. You roll them again, and it's a necrotic damage equal to that amount. So this is a cool way to kind of spread damage out across the battlefield when you're dealing with multiple targets, especially when they're, they're not necessarily bunched up together because 30 feet is not bunching. Uh, by any regard, but you could use it with somebody standing right next to them. But I do like this ability, and it got me thinking about the potential flavor 
of an ability like this and what it could look like at a table and kind of this idea that maybe because you have this certain level of command over death that you're like the strike that you blow against them causes their spirit or something to like wail and like as they're dying start to escape from their body and then be brought back in because they're not dead yet and one of the compatriots sees that and is just like what and that's kind of what causes the the damage to take hold or something like that there's a lot of different ways that you can flavor it it's just a really cool ability that i i appreciate abilities like this where it's on its surface very simple you deal sneak attack damage a creature within 30 feet of your original target takes half your sneak attack damage die when you reroll them and you round up when you're doing the division on that and so it's a very simple ability on its surface but there's so much flavor baked into it from where it's coming from in terms of the subclass i mean the title of it whales from the grave is so cool and there's a lot of different really interesting ways that you can play with it whether it's uh if they're compatriots on death store and so the portal to the the plane of the dead starts to open and their compatriot sees that and that's what causes the damage i mean there, there's a lot of different ways that you can play this but i really like this. okay ninth level let's get into it tokens of the departed the soul trinket mechanic that i was talking about in the overview so when a creature dies that you can see within 30 feet of you, you can basically snatch a piece of its soul. Now notice it didn't say a creature that you killed, just a creature that dies within 30 feet of you. Uh, so, so don't think that you have to land the killing blow or anything like that, uh, or that it even has to be an enemy. But this ability is super cool and super flavorful. And I get into the flavor later in the video. We, we're in mechanics territory right now, but I really do like it. And so there's three different things that you can do with the soul trinkets at ninth level when you gain this ability. And you can have a total number of trinkets equal to your proficiency bonus. So it goes up over time. I almost forgot to mention that. But when you have one of the, at least one soul trinket on your person, then you have advantage on death saving throws and constitution saving throws, which is super cool. And I, I understand why this was pushed off to ninth level because getting advanced advantage on constitution saving throws for a caster would be pretty big because then you're getting advantage on your concentration checks. So having this at ninth level makes it a tough like dip to get. Uh, if this was a third level ability that you got uh, when you first took the Phantom Rogue, I could see this being a very popular uh, for casters. Just dip three levels in a rogue, take Phantom and move on. Uh, so, so yeah, I do think it's smart to have it be at ninth level and it makes sense from a power standpoint because you have two other things that you can do. Additionally, when you deal sneak attack damage, you can destroy one of the soul trinkets to immediately use, uh, the whales from the grave ability without using, uh, the class feature without using one of its, its uses. I, I failed to mention that you can only do it a number of times equal to your proficiency modifier or proficiency bonus. And with this soul trinket ability, it doesn't count towards that limit. So you can destroy a soul trinket and immediately deal that necrotic damage. And then the last one is as an action, you can destroy a soul trinket to ask the spirit associated with that soul trinket, ask that soul essentially a question. Now they can only speak in a language that they knew while they were living. So if you took the soul of uh, a, uh, an animal, a beast that you killed, then it wouldn't make sense to destroy that particular soul trinket. Uh, but it can only communicate in languages it knew when it was living. It is under no obligation to be truthful to you, and it is going to answer the question as quickly and uh, simply as possible so its soul can be freed. So there's no like negotiation. It's not like you're summoning this spirit for a line of questioning. You get to ask it a question, it gives you its answer, and then it is free. So yeah, this is a pretty cool flavorful ability and requires some note taking on either the player or the DM's part. We'll get into that in a little bit, uh, but I do like it. I think it's a cool use for this ability, but it's not, it's not so powerful as to outshine other methods of speaking with the dead and summoning spirits and things like that. Uh, so I do like it. I think it's interesting. And I, I love this mechanic overall, this, this idea, but I think it has more to do with the flavor than the mechanics. At 13th level, you gain Ghost Walk. So when you use this ability as a bonus action, you assume a spectral form. So you gain fly speed of 10 feet. You can hover and you can pass through objects and creatures. But if you end your space inside one of them, you take 1d10 force damage. 
and you can use this ability once per long rest. This ability lasts for 10 minutes and you can do it once per long rest or you can destroy a soul trinket as a bonus, as part of the bonus action to do it again. So it's another use for those soul trinkets. If you need to do it multiple times per long rest, you can use them for that. So this one is, is good. Uh, the fly speed is very slow, which I kind of get, but it is a 13th level ability. I know you don't want to allow people to zoom all over the battlefield um, for 10 minutes, uh, but the, the flying speed 10 feet did make it seem a little bit lackluster in some regards. Now, hover is really cool. The ability to pass through things is also very helpful, especially for a rogue. If uh, those thieves tools just aren't your friend today, ghost walk, go through the door, unlock it from the other side. So yeah, I, I do like the ability. I think flavor for, from a flavor standpoint, it makes a lot of sense that you're, you're tapping into the idea of death so much that you're able to assume the form of your own spirit kind of thing. You're, you're able to, to throw off the, the mortal skin that restrains your spirit and move freely for 10 minutes. And then you got to come back. So I do like, it and I think it's pretty cool. And if you're enjoying the video, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel. It does help out a whole heck of a lot. Uh, links to all of the social medias and our Patreon and everything down below in the description as well. If you enjoy this and you'd like to keep up to date with what we're doing or support the channel in any way, uh, links for all of that down below. And if you'd like to talk to me about this in real time, I do stream on Twitch every Sunday and Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central and Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Central. So come by, hang out, let's talk some D&D &D and have a good time. And then at 17th level, you gain the class feature called Death's Friend. So this one's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, when you use Whales from the Grave, you deal the necrotic damage to both the second target and the first target that you initially dealt damage to. And so that's that's good. It's bumping up your, your damage output uh, a decent amount. I don't know if I would have maybe liked to have seen your full sneak attack dice being used for the one target as opposed to just duplicating the damage for both targets. Um, th this is a cool ability and I like it. I just wonder if the, the through line of the flavor would have made more sense of that damage that you're dealing to the second target becoming more intense as opposed to just reflecting back on the initial target or, or even chaining it to a third target. Uh, I think those might have been a bit cooler and a bit more jump off the page. Overall, I do like it, but it just, it, it isn't as like, wow, as a lot of 17th level abilities are. And then additionally, after you finish a long rest, if you do not have a soul trinket, one appears in your hand. So you can just reach into the ether and grab a soul trinket essentially, uh, which is really cool. I do like the ability to have one of those on hand at any given time uh, per long rest. Uh, so that does make a lot of sense. And, and it can be useful for a stretch of adventure where you're not doing a whole lot of combat. You're not killing a whole lot of people. You're not seeing a whole lot of people die. And in a, in a campaign like that, that can really kind of undercut the flavor and the mechanics of this subclass quite a bit. So granted, it does come late at 17th level, but this does do something for lessening that, where if you're in a really roleplay heavy stretch of sessions where this rogue can still have the soul trinket to use for different things. Okay, let's talk about how to play a Phantom Rogue. So obviously, out of all of the subclasses in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, this one has a really, really strong sense of flavor about it. This rogue that communicates with the dead and can utilize their spirits to their own end and, and things like that. And a subclass which set with such strong flavor, I feel like kind of deserves as strong of a story as to how your character got that. Whether it's working with your DM to where at third level something happens to where you become this phantom rogue, maybe a close brush with death, or you encounter a powerful necromancer or a lich or something like that that sends you down this path, or you include something in your backstory to show that your abilities are growing in this regard uh, to, to where you become this thing at third level. Uh, a really cool idea for this is maybe the idea that it's in your lineage. Maybe it's it's a family trait that your ancestors have been shepherds of the dead kind of thing and that they've all had these abilities. And you know, once you reach a certain point in your life, 
third level, then you, it will be your duty to take up the mantle and and do the same as your ancestors did before you. So that's that's just something to think about when you're looking at this subclass and thinking about playing it. Is be sure to give this flavor its its do justice by coming up with a really interesting story as to how you gained these abilities that are pretty unique uh, compared to a lot of other classes. And then additionally, and I kind of referenced it earlier in the video, the moment that you attain a trinket, when you hit ninth level and you, you gain the ability to gain those soul trinket, trinkets, it, make it, it should be impactful. It should be cool. It's a really cool mechanic and it's just chock full of interesting flavor and the the temptation is there obviously just be like oh yeah i take a trinket though they died okay yeah, i'm gonna take a trinket okay cool and mark it on your page and move on but th this is like a piece of a creature's soul and so at the very least you should go to the equipment chapter in the player's handbook go to the trinket table and look at all of the trinkets they have listed there for inspiration for what could be a trinket that you find and what story does that tell about the person or the creature that you killed or that you saw die that their trinket is a, a bell without a clapper in it? What, what story does that mean? What does that tell you about the person? There's so many interesting storytelling things that you can take with the phantom rogue that I, I think it's, it's worth thinking about. And this is table dependent. Sometimes you may have your DM wanting to inform you of what a soul trinket looks like. And I think it could be a relationship where most of the time you're taking it on and saying, oh, it's it's this thing. Uh, but the DM also could have some really interesting moments of, of telling a story, like starting up a quest uh, off of a soul trinket, I think would be really cool. Okay, and a party that this could work well in, obviously there is quite a few death related subclasses in the game from the, obviously the School of Necromancy Wizard, but also the Path of Ancestral Guardians, Barbarian, the Undying Warlock, uh, the Grave Domain Cleric, the Circle of Spores Druid. All of these could be really cool companions for the Phantom Rogue to adventure alongside. The Oathbreaker Paladin is also one whose abilities lend themselves really well to this idea of somebody who uh, interacts with the dead. And so I think all of those could comprise a really interesting party that the rogue could exist alongside. And, and what does a, a phantom rogue that deals with the spirits and the souls of dead creatures, how, how do they interact with a circle of spores druid that's much more interested in just the husk? <laughs> like, oh yeah, you can take the soul, I just need the body. Um, so that those are some really interesting stories that you can tell because all of these subclasses do interact with death a little bit differently. None of them interact with them the exact same way. And I think that's what makes this particular party concept really interesting is you can get into the the nuance of the flavor. If you just have a grave domain cleric in any D&D party, they're going to be the one that's obsessed with death. Like, oh, it's the death cleric. If you have the circle of spores druid, it's just going to be like, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're the one that, that likes corpses. But when you put them all together then you can really get into the nuances of what does it mean to interact with death in a fantasy setting. So I think that's a really a really cool idea for a party concept. And how to DM for this subclass. So first and foremost, when the Phantom Rogue gets a soul trinket, write down who it was from. Baseline. You have to have a list of here's what the trinket is, here's where it came from. Because, like their uh, their ability to destroy a soul trinket and speak to the spirit, you need to remember if it was a bandit, a wizard, or a wolf. Like, those are all very different spirits to interact with. So, yeah, write down, take note of at least bare minimum what type of creature it was that this soul trinket came from. But additionally, the more detail you provide, the cooler of a moment it will be if the phantom rogue has been walking around with this one soul trinket for level after level after level. And it's become their, like their, their death save trinket. And then finally they need to use it. And you have a really well detailed description of who that came from. It can be a really cool moment of like, Oh yeah, I remember that guy that I killed. <laughs> like that, That's okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, additionally, I think that kind of what I was talking about with the, the how to play 
having the soul trinket means something in in what it manifests as in terms of the the life of the soul that it came from i think is is vital to making this mechanic interesting uh maybe not vital but at least the way my brain works it is vital <laughs> but have the soul trinket tell a story about that person and also you could have like an odd entity like a an ancient hermit necromancer or just uh, another spirit or somebody tell them that when they get a certain kind of soul trinket that they need to deliver it to this spot or you could have the soul trinkets become a MacGuffin in your game that could be really interesting and maybe tell them like it will be something in this category you won't I, I don't know exactly what it is but you'll know when you find it and that can give you some wiggle room to where down the road you'd be like oh you you get a sense about this one that it's important so I think that could be a really cool way to play this subclass and DM for it. What did you all think? Did you enjoy this video? Do you like the Phantom Rogue subclass? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know which subclasses you would like to see me go over next. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Eric, and I will see you next time.